In today's video, I'm going to talk about this WD Blue SN580, uh, which is a relatively new Gen 4 NVMe SSD and one of the cheapest options that you can currently get. Now, while budget SSDs can easily go both ways and end up either being a hit or a miss, this one actually turned out to be pretty interesting and definitely worth keeping your eye on. So uh, let's check out all the test results and let's see if and when it makes sense to get this SSD. Let's begin. The SN580 will be available in 250GB, 500GB, 1TB and 2TB capacities and I have the 1TB version right here. Now I'm not really sure why they even bothered with the 250 gig version because it is barely cheaper than the 500 gigabyte version and I think that going the other way around and adding a 4 terabyte version instead would have made much more sense in my opinion. Visually it looks pretty simple, uh, you can see a controller, you can see some NAND flash but there is not much else. All components are on one side so it can be an option for thin laptops that don't fit double-sided drives. And at least for now it only comes without a heatsink. Since this is supposed to be a budget SSD, you do expect them to save up on some parts of the drive, but the SN580 actually looks fairly reasonable. It uses WD's own TLC memory, not QLC. It comes with a five year long warranty, while many other budget drives only come with three, and it has a total bytes written rating of 600 terabytes per terabyte capacity, which is again what I would call completely reasonable. They also clearly state that this is TLC memory, which is always great to see because it means that they shouldn't just randomly drop down to QLC memory later in the life cycle of this drive. Now the only obvious saving is the lack of DRAM cache, but it has a 200 megabyte host memory buffer instead. So it uses a bit of memory from your own system. Now this isn't the first drive that does this, but it is the first drive I've seen that uses 200 megabytes instead of 64, uh, like the WD Black SN770, the SN570 or the Samsung 980 do. Sequential write and read specs of around 4,000 megabytes per second aren't really that high for a Gen 4 drive, but those sequential numbers don't really mean much for most real world workloads. So let's look at actual performance instead. And as always, I'm going to start with the PC Mark 10 quick benchmark. Now this is a collection of tests that replicate all kinds of simple little things we do with our PCs every single day. Uh, working with documents, for example, opening photos, loading games, and so on. And this is a very useful benchmark to look at if you're looking for a secondary drive or an extra SSD for those uh, simple little tasks. And the SN580 did pretty well here. With a score of 603 megabytes per second, it matched the SN770 and it actually beat many DRAM based Gen 4 SSDs like the SN850X, the KC3000 and the Fury Renegade. The Samsung 990 Pro and the Gen 5 SSDs are ahead, but they cost a lot more than this drive. And the main competitors would be the Samsung 980, Kingston MB2, Crucial P3 Plus or the old SN570 and all of them performed a lot worse in this test. But let's see the full PC Mark 10 suite uh, which imitates a more serious, uh, more intense and more constant use of your system and this is a great benchmark to look at if you're looking for a new main drive or for anyone that needs to run some applications that can be very heavy on the SSD. And the SN580 dropped a few places here, but it is still in a great spot for a cheap drive. The SN770 is only very slightly ahead and the high-end DRAM based drives like the 990 Pro, SN850X, KC3000 and the Fury Renegade did perform better, but aren't that far ahead. Many other high-end Gen 4 drives like the Corsair MP600 Pro, the Crucial P5 Plus or the Transcend 250 are still behind it, while the other budget drives are even further down the list. The consistency test isn't that relevant for a lot of you because it simulates an extreme uh, multi-hour workload that most users just don't do uh, and it is not something you should buy a budget drive for but I still think it is very interesting to see how a drive holds up when really stressed for a very long period of time. 
and as expected, this is where the SN580 starts to drop down, ending up behind the old SN570. Now, it does still beat the NV2, the P3 Plus, and the Samsung 980, but for these sort of use cases, you will want to get something from the top part of this graph. The 3 d Mark storage benchmark is a test that includes a lot of gaming-related tasks, so uh, things like loading games, installing games, recording games, and just moving uh, game folders around. And this is a very nicely balanced test to look at if you're uh, going to use this drive mainly for gaming. And here, WD was basically showing off what host memory buffer can do compared to DRAM cache, with the SN580 sitting near the top yet again. Now, we already saw the same thing from the SN770, but the SN580 does it even better. It was beating much more expensive drives like the 990 Pro, KC3000, Fury Renegade, and so on, but also the competing budget drives yet again. And if we look at the gaming results that I think are most important, which is loading times, installation times, and update times, it ends up scoring about 90% of the fastest Gen 4 drive I've tested so far, which is the SN850X. But that drive usually costs about 25-30% to 30 more. Now, sequential performance is not something that is used in practice as much, but it can be relevant for some, and it is always interesting to see if a drive is meeting the speeds that they claim in their spec sheet. And in sequential writes, the SN580 is a 4000 megabyte sort of a drive, as expected, meaning that there are definitely faster drives if that is all you care about. It is ahead of the NV2 and the Samsung 980, but it is just not spectacular. The SN580 doesn't have a problem with much larger file transfers like the SN570 had, so that is a big improvement over its predecessor. And it is the same story if we look at the sequential reads. Uh, 4000 megabytes per second is kind of low for a Gen 4 drive, uh, even if it doesn't matter that much for most users. And it is also below Sony's recommended spec for PS5 use. Plus, PS5 doesn't support host memory buffer at all, so if you're looking for a drive for your PlayStation 5, I recommend you use a DRAM-based drive instead. It is also important to remember that SSD performance will depend on your exact system. Uh, host memory buffer drives in particular can really benefit from faster memory, uh, like the DDR5 we have in our test rig that we use for all SSD testing. So we retested the SN580 in a couple of tests on an i3-12100 system that is a DDR4 system, together with a Crucial P5+, Plus, which is one of the cheaper DRAM-based drives. And in the quick PCMark test, both drives ended up a bit slower than before, but the SN580 was still ahead of the P5+. Plus. And in the full PCMark suite, the score was a bit lower for both, yet again, but the difference between the drives remained about 5% in favor of the SN580. So you don't have to worry that fast HMB drives aren't interesting if you're building a lower-end system. They're still very competitive. Now, if we look at the thermals, uh, it is clear why the SN580 doesn't come with a heatsink. In most tests, it didn't really get super hot and it didn't seem to throttle. However, you can get it to throttle with an intense test and unfortunately, WD's internal sensors aren't really helpful when it comes to figuring out when that's the case. There are three sensors built in, which is actually more than expected for a budget drive, but with the FLIR camera, we can see either much higher or much lower surface temperatures than the sensors suggest. So, I would still recommend uh, placing this drive under the motherboard heatsink if possible. Now, if you do plan to run some heavier workloads and your motherboard doesn't have a heatsink for some reason, uh, you can just get a third-party heatsink for a couple of dollars or a couple of euros from Amazon. But if you just get this drive for this lighter use or just as a game drive, you will be completely fine without a heatsink as well. Now, the SN580 will currently cost you $50 in the US for the one terabyte version, which is a little bit more than the SN570, the NV2 and the P3 Plus, while being a lot faster than all of them. It is cheaper than the Samsung 980 and a lot cheaper than the DRAM-based drives in the list, so price-wise, it is just in a really good spot. 
If you look at a two terabyte version, it is the same story. Uh, some drives can save you a couple of dollars, but I don't think it's worth saving that little considering how much faster this SN580 is. Here in the Netherlands, the one terabyte SN580 is currently selling for 58 euros, which is about eight euros more than the NV2 drive. Now, if you really need to save as much as possible, then the NV2 will be fine. But I do think that the SN580 is just worth those extra few euros. And the same goes for the two terabyte version as well. Now do remember that the SN580 is fairly new and just like with most drives on the market, I really do expect it to become even more price competitive in the future. So overall, I do think that for main drives or high-end systems and production systems in general, uh, spending a bit more on a solid DRAM-based drive is still the way to go. But if you're building either a budget-focused build or you're just looking to add a second extra SSD to your system for a lot of files or for your game library, the SN580 is really hard to beat. Uh, for those tasks, it is as fast or faster than most high-end Gen 4 drives while being pretty cheap. So if you find it in your region for a good price, this is the budget drive to go for. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their brand new Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, including the new 12 volt high power cable for the latest RTX graphics cards. And as a little bonus, you get a cozy 10 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Now that is all I have for this video. If you liked it and you want to see more videos like this one, do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!